So today we are going to take a look at Like a Thief in Broad Daylight by Slavo Zizek. Um, so, uh, first off, this book is very eclectic and he moves around um, kind of talking about a lot of uh, different ideas. Generally speaking, they are uh, political, economic, or related to technology. And they are all informed by there's kind of four main thinkers uh, that he appeals to, Lacan, uh, Freud, uh, Marx, and Hegel. And so his commentary is um, generally operating from that perspective, and so he talks about um, capitalism and oppression and ideology a lot. Um, he's really all over the place, though, uh, so it's difficult to give a very good synopsis. I could... Um, read off some, why don't we do a few examples. Um, so uh, he often uses very colorful language and analogies to talk about things. Uh, one example is he talks about how um, uh, phones, the, or not phones, technology itself is um, creating uh, ideological structures. So, uh, and specifically in like our psychology. So he talks about how phones, they develop all these new gadgets and toys, and then you feel a guilt to use these toys. And then the, the, the mode of production or the capitalist, um, I, I wanna use the type of language he uses, but what ends up happening is that the, the market structure uh, creates the problem of having a phone that is too powerful, and then, then it offers a solution uh, such as the light phone 2, which is very funny because the whole reason you're not using the light phone 2 to begin with is because it's the new phone with all the gadgets you get the iPhone. Um, another uh, criticism that he put forth that I thought was very interesting was regarding um, politics in uh, the far right uh, populist movements that are arising. He specifically talks about uh, Le Pen and uh, um, Trump. And so uh, what his criticism is, is largely that these are rising as a consequence um, to the more, uh, what he calls radical centrists and they're appealing to uh, uh, the, the current, the older form of what we've had has just been special interests driven and it gives rise to the populists. And he talks a lot about how in these elections where you have uh, Hillary versus Trump or uh, Macron versus Le Pen, um, the argument is much less for Hillary and for uh, Macron than uh, it is against the other ones. And so in a sense, uh, both candidates operate from fear. I thought that was interesting. Um, he also talks about how we've moved from um, the types of the way in which uh, what's going on is communicated to um, people is much less utopian. Like the the ideology structure is not telling us that we're in a utopia. It's telling us that um, this is it and it's terrible, but there's not much you can do about it. Here, I'm going to get the quote uh, because he kind of concludes the book with this bit. And I thought it was... Um, Interesting. The predominant ideology now is not a positive vision of some utopian future, but one of cynical resignation, an acceptance of how the world really is, accompanied by a warning that if we ever want to change it too much, only totalitarian horror will ensue. And then he talks a little bit. And then the main function of ideolo uh, ideological censorship today is not to crush actual resistance. This is the job of uh, repressive state apparatuses, but to crush hope. Uh, immediately to denounce every critical project as an opening a pa as opening a path to an at the end of which is something like a gulag. So um, uh, anyways, uh, let's get into the ratings a little bit. It's very hard like it's hard to summarize because he just um, goes from like um, interesting viewpoint to interesting viewpoint. Uh, that in a way that's not really cohesive, but it's kind of attacking what's going on right now with political, technological, and economic um, stuff. Uh, so for utility, I gave it a four. Um, I don't think this book, uh, it doesn't offer much in terms of prescription. It gives you new ways to look at things, and to some degree that's useful, but um, uh, unless you're interested in the critical project of uh, revolution, which is, I mean... Um, 
I don't think this book's really going to give you too much in terms of utility. I'd mainly only read it because it's his viewpoints are interesting and he puts them in it from a different perspective and it's funny. Um, for entertainment, I gave him a seven and a half. Uh, the when it's when his language is not uh, obtuse, it's actually very f funny and interesting. Uh, he goes off on a lot of um, tangents, talking about um, movies and doing analysis from that perspective, which makes sense because um, his background with Freud and Lacan. Um, so if you specifically like, uh, he does a really long one on Blade Runner 2049. So if you like that movie, that might be a, a reason to uh, take a look at uh, this book. Um, so let's see. Uh, I enjoyed reading it, uh, except the parts where I didn't know what he was talking about, because I'm not hyper familiar with Lacan, so when he started talking about Lacan, uh, Lacanian theory, it was it was a struggle a little bit. Um, for interest, I gave it an 8. Uh, his viewpoints are um, not just hyper-intuitive uh, interpretations of what's going on, and um, they're very interesting, and there's a lot of uh, times where he points out where something used to be like this, and now it's switched, and that's interesting, and um, it's still uh, a form of Impression or ideology, according to him. Um, for novelty, I gave it a seven. His perspectives are a lot different. Um, even though he's not applying, he's not creating some model out of nothing uh, that is uh, world breaking, which would be how you would get like a really high score on novelty. But at the same time, um, he is engaging ideas in interesting ways and from interesting perspectives. So, um, for readability, I gave it a three point five. Uh, if you don't have a background in any of the four thinkers that I talked about at the beginning, uh, I think parts of these this book are going to be like real struggle, uh, because he talks in such a way that he assumes that you understand what a lot of the language, the more technical language means, so if you don't know the language, it's going to be a little bit tough. Um, he's also all over the place, um, and it's not hyper-cohesive. Uh, it's very stream-of-consciousness-esque, and so... Uh, it could be structured better to help understanding. Uh, for difficulty, I gave it a four. Um, I it, it might be the case that it should be significantly lower than this, uh, just because I um, have some understanding of Freud and uh, Marx and Hegel that I can get through those parts um, easier than the average person might. It might be the case that you actually need quite a bit of background knowledge to get through some of this, but I, I don't think that I think you can slog through it if you really wanted to. So I gave it a four, so it's it's hard, but it's not um, impossible. He doesn't really help you out though, uh, in terms of how he structures it or offering explanations. Um, so overall, uh, five point nine three. Um, I would recommend this book specifically to uh, people who are interested in a more contemporary uh, perspective uh, from. Uh, someone who is, um, like, Zizek is, um, pretty well respected as an intellectual, uh, and if you are interested in, uh, more contemporary versions of Marx, Hegel, Lacan, and Freud, um, then, uh, I would, this would be something to recommend, but outside of that, uh, there's some passages that are really, really funny. Um, and some bits, like my favorite is him when he compares Macron to a chocolate laxative, um, where uh, chocolate causes constipation and the laxative cures it. And he says people like Macron are the cause of people like Le Pen. So it's we're kind of offering uh, uh, something that is both simultaneously a cause and a solution to the constipation, which I think is like a hilarious way to capture it. But he does stuff like that a lot. So that stuff's funny. But um, the overall book as a whole, if you don't have an interest or a background in those four thinkers, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, if you do, uh, the book's pretty interesting and funny, uh, the parts I could get through. And then if you're reading it from some critical interest in um, uh, the project of uh, revolution, which, okay, if you're reading it for that reason, you are. Uh, the big takeaway he gives is that he has this passage where he talks about 
Trotsky and the October Revolution and how Trotsky went after the utilities. I forget which utility he went after. I think it was the electricity. Um, but the point he makes is that he didn't go for the palace. He didn't go for the head of the apparatus. Uh, he went for the utilities because that's where the real power was. And um, uh, Zizek uh, argues that the real point of power um, that is required to take control of is um, the internet, the World Wide Web talks about Julian Assange and um, stuff of that nature along that vein, and he talks about how it's uh, critical to not lose uh, control over these structures to um, mega corporations, and so uh, that could be a reason to read it. Uh, but outside of that, I'm I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, even though I enjoyed reading it a lot, uh, I couldn't. In good conscience, just recommend it to someone who doesn't have a background with those four thinkers. And so...